Welcome to EPG Partsala. Today I am going to present module on under paper number 3. The topic of the paper is thermodynamics of living system and bioenergetics. This is module number 15 and the topic of the module is basic of electrogastrography. First I will start with the objectives of the modules. It includes the introduction, physiology of gastric movements, electrogastrography, measurements, protocol for a electrogastrography test, protocol for a electrogastrography test, analysis of electrogastrography and at the last summary. First, I will talk about the introduction of the electrogastrography. Electrogastrography is the graphical recording of an electrogastrogram. The electrogastrography was first reported in 1920 by Walter Alvarez. He performed the experiment on the abdominal surface of a little old man. He placed two surface electrodes on abdominal wall of the subject and connected them with a string galvanometer. He first demonstrated a sinusoidal EGG recording. While reporting the case, he mentioned that the abdominal wall, wall was so thin that he can easily see the peristaltic movements by naked eyes. He never reported any other studies after that because of lack of technological developments. Following this path was a famous pediatrician named Harrison Tumper who performed EGG on children. He reported the work on a five week old child who was suffering from pyloric stenosis. It is a condition where there is narrowing of the opening from the stomach and the small intestine. He noticed that the electrogastrography has a shifting baseline. After more than 30 years of that work done by Dr. Harrison, R.C. Davis, who was a psychophysiologist in mid-1950s, used needle electrodes and a swallowed balloon for the validation of electrogastrography. He published two papers and made a widespread impact on the way the EGG research was going on. After him, it was the year 1974 when Stevens and Worrell, who applied spectral analysis technique to electrogastrography. Since then, the study on EGG has improvised and in Dr. Stern words, the history of electrogastrography can be described as three beginnings, a length period of incubation and a recent explosion. Proceeding further, we will talk about the physiology of gastric movements. Throughout the gastrointestinal tract, there is myoelectrical activity. Many in vitro studies have shown different myoelectrical activity from various parts of the stomach. The highest frequency was found in the corpus part of the stomach and the lowest frequency was found in the antrum. But the in vivo studies have shown a different scenario. It is found that, that the myoelectrical activity is same throughout the various part of the stomach. It is because the myoelectric activity of the corpus has the highest frequency. So it paces the rest of the stomach in the same higher frequency. In with figure 1, it will be very clear. There are two different waveforms that are found in stomach. First is the slow waves. First is the slow waves that is also called as the pace setter potential or the electrical control activity. The second is the fast waves. It is also called as 
accent potential or the electrical response activity. The slow waves are believed to be developed from the intestinal cells of Kazal ICC. The frequency of the normal slow waves is 3 cycles per minute in humans but in dogs it is 5 cycles per minute. The important property of slow wave is to determine the maximum frequency and propagation of gastric contraction. So the important question that comes to mind is how do gastric contraction takes place? It is the spike potential that plays a very important role in the contraction. In the latest study it has been shown that the spike potential are mainly due to the influx of calcium and the repolarization is mainly due to potassium efflux. Now we are going to st study about the normal and the abnormal gastric myoelectric activity. Many a times the GMA may become abnormal in disease states or alters upon various types of provocation. So, the various types of abnormal GMA listed in literature are as follows. First is the gastric dysarrhythmia. First is the gastric dysarrhythmia. They are further classified into bradygastria. Here the number of contraction per minute is from 0.5 to 2. But second is the tachygastria. The contraction is in the range of 4 to 9 cycles per minute. The arrhythmia. It is the absence of rhythmic slow waves. Second is the abnormal slow wave propagation. It is diagnosed in gastroparesis patient by high resolution mapping. Third is the electromechanical uncoupling. It is the presence of normal slow waves but the absence of contractile activity. Now we are going to talk about the measurements of electrogastrography. The recording system. In any design of electrogastrography signal, acquisition system in the record in the in any design of electrogastrography signal acquisition system, the three principal requirements must be kept in mind. First is the front head. It interface the analog input signal to the analog to digital converter that is the ADC. The second is the voltage reference. It is an electronic device which maintains a constant voltage. The constant voltage is maintained regardless of the temperature changes, the load on the device, power supply variations and passage of time. Now what is the digital interface? It is a medium through which we can interact with the computer. The interaction act be in the form of auditory, visual and functional components. It is a by touch or talk. The concept of volume conductor in electrogastrography. The biological tissue separating the sources and the recording electrodes are called the volume conductors. It plays a vital role in acquisition of signals. The generated action potential creates an electric field in the surrounding space. Thus the potential generated by the motor unit can also be detected at a distant location. The potential signal have to transverse through various media so as to reach the recording electrodes. Under the static condition, the volume conductor obeys some relations that is the delta j is equal to i, j is equal to delta uh, sigma e, j is equal to sigma e, then e is equal to minus delta pi. Here j is the current density in the volume conductor, 
I is the current density in source, sigma re represents the conductivity of the media and if the media is homogeneous, conductivity does not does depend upon the site of recording. But if the media is non-homogeneous, then the conductivity is across various media and distance of electrode and the source play a very crucial role. Now we are going to discuss about the recording settings. Recording settings information is very crucial in biomedical research because the appropriate setting of the instrument will not only give a proper signal but also helps in diagnosis of a disease. The two major challenges associated with an EGG recording devices are first is the amplification. The biological signals are very weak in nature. They need a proper amplifier for the adequate amplif amplification by recording devices. It brings the amplified signal to an appropriate range for display and analysis. The electrogastrography signal is usually in the range of 50 to 100 microvolt. Second is the filter. The main purpose of the filter is to remove any noise and it determines the frequency range to be maximally amplified. A wrong filter selection may lead to a distortion and sometimes even disappearance of the signals. The interested range of the electrogastrography signal is 0 0.0083 to 0.15 Hz. So the appropriate signal range is 0.0083 to 1 Hz. For example, if a high pass filter is applied for a frequency of 3 Hz, slow gastric waves are of no longer seen. Now the concept of noise in electrogastrography. In electronics, a noise is an unwanted disturbance in any electrical signal. It varies greatly in electronic devices as it is produced by several different effects. To reduce noise, it is important to apply filters. The main functions of filter are to remove the unwanted signal and give a biologically important signal. The procedure of recording in electrogastrography is as follows. A very common mistake made by people is an inadequate skin preparation and electrode placement. Let us see them one by one. First is the skin preparation. The abdominal skin where the electrode is to be placed must be thoroughly cleaned. The abdominal skin where the electrode is to be placed must be thoroughly cleaned and ensure that the impedance between the pair of electrode is below 100 kilo ohms. Then it is advised to abrade the skin till it turns pink using sandy skin preparation jelly. Then apply a thin layer of electrode jelly for a minute to let the gel penetrate the skin and establish a good skin electrode contact. The excess gel must be wiped up. The proper placement of electrode reduces electrode skin impedance. The electrode that we use these days come with already attached gel. When the electrode is placed on the skin, many charge layers are created. They are also called the Helmholtz layer at the metal gel and the gel skin interface. There were forming a imaginary or capacitive 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 thereby forming a imaginary or capacitive component of impedance. If we record impedance between two electrodes separated by gel and the 
gel electrode applied on the skin, we will find that the impedance in the first scenario is lesser than the second. To reduce the impedance, it is also important to prepare the skin surface. Now we are going to talk about the impedance and the effects of skin preparation. The electrode gel skin impedance affects the signal acquisition. The widely varied impedance interferes with the monopolar or bipolar recordings. So having a good skin preparation is desirable. The best mode of the skin preparation is first by rubbing the surface with an abrasive conductive paste and rinsing. The second method is washing the surface with soap for 30 seconds and then rinsing. Now the placement of the electrodes. The most commonly used configuration for recording is one channel electrogastrography. Here the active electrode is placed at the midline between the xiphoid process and the umbilicus. Another electrode is placed at a distance of 5 cm up and 45 degrees from the first active electrode. The ground electrode is then placed at the left coastal margin horizontal to the first active electrode. Multiple channel recording will provide more accurate information than the single channel recording. Now the, we will discuss about the positioning of the subject during the electrogastrography. One volunteer is required to volunteer as the subject. The recording should be made in a quiet room that is free from ambient or background noises. External disturbances like people talking, fans, AC, etc. will produce disturbances in the electrogastrography. The subject must be preferably the subject must be preferably in the supine position and it should be ensured that the patient's movement do not directly or indirectly transmit vibration to the surface electrodes or to the connecting cable. The electrode must be placed on the bare abdomen without any clothing. The patient must remain still without talking. The transducer should rest flatly in full contact with the abdominal wall of the subject and no undue pressure must be given on the electrode The sound, as the sound may get damped or distorted by the pressure. The hair on the abdominal wall should be saved or plastered down before applying electrode to the abdominal skin. The surface electrode must be positioned on the areas of the abdomen as mentioned above. To ensure that the position of the subject is the same if there are multiple sessions. Timing of unavoidable body movement or motion artifacts should be noted and the recording period with motion artifacts must be removed before analysis. Now the duration of recording in electrogastrography. A co very common mistake people used to make in is the duration of the recording of electrogastrography. Uh, if it is too short, then it is inadequate for analysis and if it is too long then the problem with artifacts will arise. So the idle timing for the recording is very important. The electrogastrography is composed of three waves in a magnet. 
so a minimum of 30 minutes duration of recording is very important for an accurate measurement of gastric slow waves during each phase of fasting fed baseline or after intervention now we will discuss about the factors affecting the signal recording first is the movement of the cables second is a momentary loss of skin electrode contact causing motion artifacts third is the fluctuation of the charge distribution on the skin and connection cables fourth is a power line interface now we are going to discuss about the protocol for a clinical electrogastrography test the electrogastrography should be recorded in both fasting and fed states the stomach the, um, the stomach should be empty when the baseline or fasting electrogastrography is recorded and it should be kept in mind that at least a 6 hour fasting should be done by the subject because a complete stomach emptying takes around 4 hours suspicion should arise if the period is longer it shows a suspected gastric mortality disorder the duration of postprandial recording should be at least 30 to 60 minutes depending upon the symptomatic response of the subject to meals and it is better to avoid drinking water at least 2 hours before the test avoid any medication that alters gastric mortality for two toothrays avoid any medication that alters gastric mortality for two to three days before the EGG test the test made should contain a minimum of 250 calorie better of 400 kilocalorie with no more than 35 percent of fat the solid meals are usually recommended because in the literature it's seen that different meal may result in different postprandial EGG responses so in a normal adult human a solid test meal having high calories that is approximately 400 kilocalorie results in an increase in both amplitude and frequency of gastric slow waves whereas a liquid meal may increase slow wave amplitude and reduce its frequency a meal with a high percentage of fat approximately 50 percent may induce gastric dysarrhythmia thus the composition of the meal should be considered when interpreting post branded egg the subject must be alert and must not fall asleep while the procedure is going on because the gastric slow wave changes during sleep now we will talk about the analysis of electrogastrography EGG parameters can be analyzed from the spectral analysis by using dominant frequency and power fasting fed power ratio percentage of normal gastric slow waves and percentage of gastric dysarrhythmia in this section we will see how each one is interpreted now let us talk about the first mode of analysis dominant frequency and power the normal range of the dominant frequency of the EGG is between 2 to 4 cpm the EGG is called bradycastria if its dominant frequency is lower than 2 cpm it is called tachycardia if dominant frequency is higher than 4 cpm but lower than 9 cpm and arrhythmia if there is no dominant peak power in the spectrum now the power ratio or relative electrogastrography power change it is a commonly used parameter used before and after an intervention it is generally accepted 
that a ratio of greater than 1 reflects an increase in gastric contractility due to the intervention and a ratio of less than 1 reflects a decrease in gastric contractility. In case only the decibel unit is used, the ratio should be replaced by the difference between the baseline and after intervention. Now we are going to talk about the percentage of normal gastric slow waves. It is a quantitative assessment of slow wave measured from the electrogastrography. It is defined as the percentage of time during which normal gastric slow waves are observed in the EGG. The percentage of normal slow waves come can be computed from the running power spectra of the EGG. One spectra is derived from every one minute or some other short period of EGG data. The minute is considered normal if its EGG spectrum exhibit a dominant power in the range of 2 to 4 CPM. In humans, the normal percentage of gastric so waves is defined as 70%. Now the percentage of gastric dysarrhythmia. The percentage of gastric dysarrhythmia is defined as a percentage of time during which gastric dysarrhythmia is observed in the electrogastrography. It is computed in the same way as that for a, the percentage of normal slow waves. It is further classified into the percentage of bradygastria, the percentage of tachygastria and the percentage of arrhythmia. The electrogastrography can be utilized in various ways starting from the electrophysiological studies to the applications in the clinical scenarios for diagnosing various motility disorders in humans. Now we can summarize the whole modules as follows. The electrogastrography is a non-invasive method for analyzing the gastric mortality generated by the intestinal cells of Kazal. The electrical signal so generated is picked up by the electrodes placed either on the surface of the abdomen or placed by in an invasive method on the gastric mucosa. The reading so generated is displayed on a computer screen and recording analyzed by using the various power spectral method. The utility of this method can be found in clinical scenarios where there is gut mortality related disorders. The electrophysiological studies done with this method for the research purpose has a far way to go. Thank you.